Glory to Jesus Christ. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, brothers. Hello, sisters in Christ. I hope that you all are well in the Lord. I'm always honored to be in your presence, guys. I thank you that I am your sister in Christ, and I thank you for coming to hear what thus saith the Lord. So I have a word of encouragement for somebody today. This is actually a revelation that came from Bible verses or Bible verses in the book of Genesis that God gave me. And the title of this message is, you heard it in the spirit first and you still qualify despite what tradition says. Let me say that again. The Lord is saying, you heard it in the spirit first and you still qualify despite what tradition says as it relates to marriage. Oh my goodness. So people of God, before I get into this word, let us first say a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, we love you. We come to you humbly and also hungry to hear the word of the Lord on today. Father, we thank you, Lord, for walking with us and talking with us. Father, we understand that you are the Alpha, the Omega, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. We thank you for providing for our every needs. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up out of our beds. We thank you for taking care of our families. We thank you, Lord, for providing us with the promise of protection. Father God, we just give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We thank you, Lord, for allowing for us to be in fellowship on today. Father, we thank you for releasing your Holy Spirit upon the saints. Father, not my will, but yours. I ask that you will only allow for me to speak what is on your heart and not my own. Thank you, Father, for all that you do for us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the tools that we need to continue this journey with you. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your warnings and your words. All of these things help build us up to get us ready to enter into the gates of heaven. And Father, we just want to give everything to you. We want to surrender ourselves to you. We understand that you are Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we just thank you. And we give you all the glory and honor and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen and amen. As I said earlier, this word came from me reading the book of Genesis chapter 2. This is also a word of encouragement to you as well. This word is very specific to a group of people. God wants to speak to those of you that God has already given you a promise of marriage. You heard the promise of marriage first in the spirit. And the second thing is, is that not only did you hear the promise of marriage in the spirit, but since God gave you the word, you have been living in righteousness. Hallelujah. This word is for you. Child of God, the Lord wants to speak to you about the promise that he gave you concerning marriage. And the reason why God wants to speak to you is because you happen to be a person that is not necessarily going to walk into marriage based on tradition, if that makes sense. You are not the person that is going to walk into a marriage the right way the first time. Let me say that again. You are not going to be the person that walks into a marriage the right way the first time. In your eyes, you do not feel qualified or the world says that you're not qualified because you didn't follow the exact steps as the traditional way of, of, of going into a marriage. Hallelujah. So listen, let me tell you how I got to this word, y'all. I was speaking to my sister in Christ a couple weeks ago, maybe three or four weeks. And we were talking about marriage in general. We were talking about relationships. And as we were speaking on the phone, I remember just interrupting her. And I said, sis, the number 222 just keeps coming up in my head. And I don't know whether it's a date. I don't know what the numbers mean. I said, but let's write this number down because I just have this feeling inside of me that we're going to come back to this number. We're going to revisit this number. And I said, I absolutely don't even know why, but let's just write this number down. And so I wrote it down. And the next week I was in the shower. 
I got out of the shower and then I sat on top of my bed and I just happened to be staring at the wall in front of me. And I just closed my eyes. I didn't say anything, but I remember just closing my eyes and I heard the number 222 rise up in my spirit, 222. And I called out 222. Then I heard Genesis chapter two. And then I heard Genesis chapter two, verses 21 through 22. This was all in one gulp of time. And I remember after hearing that, I said, God, do you want me to read Genesis chapter two? And he said, yes, I heard yes. I said, do you want me to read Genesis chapter two, verses 21 through 22? And he said, yes, I want you to read it. And anytime God says, yes, yes, yes. When I ask him a question, he answers me right away. That means that I need to get to the word of God, like right then and there, basically. So what I did was I got my Bible and I just started reading the scriptures. And so I want to read these scriptures to you first before I get into the word so that you will understand what God is saying. All right. In Genesis chapter two, verses 21 through 22, it says, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Guys, after I read these verses, I just felt chills go through my body. And I knew that God was getting ready to impart a message inside of me to share with you. And so what the Lord was saying to me during that time, he said, beloved, I want you to tell them that I made one man from under the arm of a man so that he might protect her and from next to his heart that he might love her because I made them one out of one man for the purpose, hallelujah, of marriage. God said to me, beloved, tell them that they heard it first in the spirit. And that means that they will marry despite what tradition says. Let me say that again. God is saying, tell them that they heard the promise of marriage in the spirit first from me. And despite what tradition says, I, the Lord, your God, am going to honor my word. Okay. So let me be just a little bit transparent here, guys. I'm not going to lie. Even after really digging deep into this, this message, I, I had some crying moments you know, just kind of reminiscing about myself. I mean, I don't feel like this now, but I do feel that there's someone that may be here in their lives. I don't know, or maybe you're going through this in your life. And I just feel like I need to be transparent. I can attest to the backwardness that took place in my own life that brought me to believe at some point in time that I didn't qualify to get married. I wasn't qualified to have a husband. Why did I feel that way? Because I was one of those ones that had kids. At a young age, I had my first child when I was 16 years old. And I wasn't married. You know, I was one of those people that that were in and out of sexual relationships with men that I was not married to. And the list goes on, you know. And so when I finally gave my life to Jesus Christ, even after he told me that he had forgiven me and that he was going to clean me up, I still didn't feel like I was qualified to get married because of my past. Because I had already had kids in my life, right? I had already... Uh, partake in sexual activity. And I thought that way because when you read the word of God, it lays out how one should build a family. And the way you're supposed to build a family is you are supposed to be married first before you have kids, right? You're supposed to be married first before you have sex, right? So what I had learned from all of that is that despite my past though, God still gave me a promise of marriage. Why? Because when I made that decision to fully surrender myself to Jesus, he was able to clean me up and make me ready for a kingdom spouse. What did that mean for me? That mean that after he cleaned me up, right? After he took me out of the world and partaking in things that were not of him, in my righteous living, 
I had to refrain from having sexual relationships with men that I was not married to. I needed to stay celibate, right? It, it meant that I needed to focus on God and put God in my life first. I needed to maintain a relationship with God first. God had to teach me how to be a woman first. He had to teach me how to be a wife, right? So with that said, God is saying that many of you have lived lifestyles that are very similar to mine. And God is saying that some of you think that you are disqualified for marriage, even though you have fully surrendered yourself to Christ since then, even though you have been living in righteousness, you still don't think that your marriage promise that God told you in the spirit first is going to come to pass. But God is saying that the reason why your marriage promise has not come to pass is because it's not the appointed time. See, a lot of times we don't realize that the reason why we're not married yet, even though God has given us the promise, is because there's a work that he is still doing in us. Like I said, for me, God had to clean me up. God had to make me ready to be a wife. And for some of you women, you're not ready to be a wife. There's some things that God has got to get out of you. There's some things that he wants you to understand on how you're going to serve your husband and vice versa. The man of God, you're not ready. There's some things that God has got to get out of you. There's some things that you are going to have to do for your wife that you are not ready to do right now. And sometimes we, the woman of God, or the man of God is ready, but the spouse that God has chosen for us is not ready. Hallelujah. And so that is why you are still in your waiting season. God is saying for some of you, you have already met your spouse. And for some of you, you will soon meet your spouse. The Lord says that this marriage, this matrimony seems to be long overdue in your mind, but God is saying that it shall come. It will come. God is saying, stop focusing on the time frame, but he wants you to focus on what he is doing in you. Focus on what it is that you need to get right in your own life so that you can be that wife or that husband to your spouse. Also understand that God may have to do a work in your future spouse. There may be some things that your future spouse has to get right with God. God is not going to give you a half-finished person. He's not going to give you nothing that's half-stepping. God is going to give you the fullness of his glory in a person before he releases them to you. Does that make sense, guys? So listen, God says that you are qualified. God says that you are qualified. When you hear prophetic words about kingdom spouses, God says the next thing that you need to do is understand, okay, did he give you the promise? Yes, he gave you the promise. So you receive that. And then the last thing that you do is you take it to the father and you allow for him to speak to your spirit about the timing of when your marriage is gonna come to pass. There are no exact dates that any prophet or any servant of the Lord can give you. Why? Because we only prophesy in part, people of God. Ultimately, God is going to be the one that is going to release the kingdom spouse. But know that it will come to pass. Why will it come to pass, people of God? Because you heard it in the spirit first. Anytime God gives you a promise in the spirit, Anytime God tells you he going to do something, you better understand that God is not a man that he shall lie and that his word shall not return void and that the promise of marriage is going to come to pass in your life. But it will be at the appointed time. And God is saying that while you are waiting for your kingdom spouse to arrive, he needs for you to stop breaking your spirit down with the self-inflicting words of the enemy that says that you're not qualified. You are qualified. Because if you weren't qualified to get married, then God would have never gave you the promise. Do you hear me, child of God? God says that he's going to honor this in your life. So don't be dismayed because you see other people getting married. Don't be dismayed when you see the diamond ring on someone's finger. Don't be dismayed, okay? Your time will come. You will have your opportunity to embrace your spouse. 
God is going to give you this marriage that he promised you in the spirit. Why? Because if you go back to the book of Genesis chapter 2, what does it say? God's plan for man and woman was to become one, to be married. It is God's intentions, hallelujah, for you to come into agreement with your spouse, for you to have a spouse into the end of your days. That is what God wants for you, okay? But you have to allow for him to give it to you at his appointed time. So guys, let's not idolize these marriage words. Let's not take them so much so that you get disappointed because you don't feel like stuff is happening in your time. God is going to grant it. This is confirmation to your spirit. And yes, you are qualified for your marriage. But God says at the appointed time. So that is the word on today. Remember, we are here on purpose to glorify God in Jesus' holy name. I love you all. I thank you for subscribing to Shanika Byers United for Christ. I thank you for subscribing to our second channel, our prayer channel, United for Christ Prayer Room. I just thank you all for your love and your seeds and your gifts that you're sending into the ministry. And if it's the Lord's will, I will be back here sometime soon to serve you. Bye.